Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Unmuted. And uh, here, just to give a bit of an update, of course, uh, the past few weeks, we've had uh, a few guests, of course, uh, that being Philip Lawrence, uh, where we talked about uh, farmers and rural issues, and of course, um, a very special episode with Arnold Beerson talking about human trafficking. I hope to get more guests on in the near future um, <clears throat> and talk of things such as um, the new upcoming, um, I believe it was put on hold, but the legislation on MAID here in Canada. Um, for those who don't MAID is, it's the medical assistance in dying and uh, kind of the new implementation of that. Definitely something we'll get into in the near future for sure. But today I want to talk um, on an issue um, that I've been working on for about... Um, I would say around a little over two, two years. And um, so uh, this is, of course, related to my campaign, A Race to 338. I have talked about it on this channel before. Um, if you haven't um, heard me talk about it yet um, or you don't know what that is, um, that's what this video is all about. It's uh, here to explain my campaign and my efforts, what I've been doing so far Um uh, to uh, keep the fight on for ALS. So I'm sure as some of you um, are, are, are aware, probably not everyone, you know, my dad was diagnosed uh, with ALS back in um, 20, uh, 2019, in the summer of 2019. Um, and then, of course, passed away uh, with ALS um, back in uh, November of 2022. Uh, and so... Since that point, I've taken a break um, up until recently from this channel and as well that um, campaign efforts um, for this campaign, the Race of 338. Um, so what this is, about two years ago, I started this campaign with three MPs, um, Bob Zimmer, uh, Todd Doherty, and Carrie Lynn Finlay. Um, first of all, in the description, you will see a list of all the MPs, all 26 members of parliament uh, that have currently signed on to the Team NDLS in the description below. Um, <clears throat> they are there and uh, make sure to definitely uh, take a look to see if your MP is there. If they are not, um, tag them in the video, share them in the comments, share this video and tag them on there. Uh, it's how, um, and make sure you call them and, uh, you know, let them know, hey, this guy's looking to build a team of MPs. Um, me alone can't just do this kind of stuff. It has to be it has to be uh, us as a collective and, you know, it has to be the people saying something right. So um, that's uh, why this is so important. What? Well, why is this important? You know, it's a discussion I've gone on to a long time where some people think what you need is good PR. You need the famous or celebrity people, or I guess now the celebrities are on YouTube, the YouTubers to really get their attention on. And, you know, this part of what I do here is um, awareness um, um, on not just ALS, but many of the unmuted issues. Um, but it is important. Awareness is important. Don't get me wrong. But it does... A lot less than you actually might think it it does, you know. I mean, let's look at the, some of the issues, you know, such as you know, uh, uh, cancer, diabetes. These issues where we've known about them for hundreds of years and taken millions of lives, and uh, if not taken, definitely greatly affected, uh, probably billions of others, right? So. And, and we have so much PR for those diseases and nothing really has happened too greatly. You know, you hear some great stuff. For example, I think Israel came out with, uh, they're coming up with something to freeze cancer cells and stop them from spreading. Um, I think that was an article I read somewhere like a few years ago. Don't know how well that's come out. I mean, let's be honest, medical products coming out of Israel are usually our top things and usually the best. So um and uh you know for example antibiotics came out of israel so uh, we can usually count on it if it's coming out of israel's medical it's probably uh gonna work well but <clears throat> nonetheless i mean including treatments which we'll get into in a second um but why i did this it is because while pr seems like a good way to get the message across how do i say this morning people just don't care 
you know, unless it affects you personally, you don't care. And I, and I know there are probably people who are out there going to probably say that's not true. I, I care about every issue. My heart bleeds for every little thing. I'm sure that's nice to say on social media where you can get a bit of attention. But in reality, it's not true. If it doesn't affect you, you just don't care. And that's, that's you know, sounds harsh, but it's our reality. You know, if, you know, it's the reality I don't blame anyone for it. I didn't care about ALS until it hit, you know, my life personally, right? So it's just a reality. So that's why PR is not as effective as we think it is. Yes, it's maybe, it's probably the best way to do PR works is it gets money for causes, but it doesn't actually bring change to anything. I know very little issues that PR itself has caused effective change. That's why I created this campaign, the Race to 338, where it actually gets members of parliament involved because it gets the place of power where power is affected to make change. Believe me, uh, Wayne, videos with Wayne Gretzky or Ryan Reynolds aren't going to make Health Canada change their mind on issues and make them act differently. It's going to be the Minister of Health or legislation voted on by the majority of members of Parliament, which will need, by the way, 170, I believe, is the majority in the House of Commons. So we need at least 170 MPs willing to not only vote on, but create legislation if we don't have a minister, which FYI, the Minister of Health, I have tried to contact uh, now three ministers of health uh, since uh, the uh, last government, um, and none of which have decided to one, Patty Heidi got back to me saying essentially they're going to do nothing. Um, we're just going to sit on our hands and let people die until something good comes our way and we'll maybe do something. That's essentially what their email was. So, I mean, Patty Heidi was useless as health minister. I mean, she was health minister during the bloody pandemic. If that tells you anything and how poorly she acted then, that should tell you how I don't, I would never even really have trusted her in her hands, anyways. Um, let's be honest, the health critic at the time, Michelle Rempel, was also just as useless, who did not want to sign on letters supporting specific treatments coming on because it would be to, uh, she could be held accountable for anything going wrong, um, which was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What, what single MP who supports a letter gets blamed for health, with, with health progress going wrong? No, that would actually be Health Canada, who is their job, to to go through the trials of these treatments to make sure they're okay so i mean it's one of the problems i want to get into because accountability and being more concerned about accountability and being more concerned about your own reputation versus the actual health of canadians which is should be your only in priority as health minister or even deputy or whatever it's called the shadow minister of health but um, that's one reason why I just absolutely have just lost all faith in Michelle Rempel and anything she does and her staff is a tie to, frankly. Um, and same with Patty Haidu. So those are two people who I've tried to reach out for help and who have refused to help. Um, and, and yes, they've outright refused to help. Not only has Michelle Rempel refused to be part of this team she's refused to meet with me refused to sign on any letter unless that letter was generic and broad as possible which personally i think the coward that's the coward's way out of doing things you know and and that's a shame like some of that high caliber mp um who has so much media following so much uh <clears throat> just so much following in general that she cares more about her own PR than just helping people. Because in the end, if she can even be held accountable, if she if there's a risk of being accountable for one death, for her it's not worth the 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 not doing anything and being the deaths of millions more. Um but that, that's where we change things, government. So as I said, I have 26 ever since um two years ago. So ever since 2021, um, we have signed on, or I have signed on, I should say, um, I'm hoping it'll be a we, <laughs> uh, uh, looking to get a uh, sponsorship from ALS, ALS groups, not just for my campaign, 
but hopefully for this podcast and we can actually get some uh, people behind it and sponsorships from ALS groups in Canada. Um, hopefully it's possible. It's a possibility in the talks, nothing official yet, but here's hoping we get attention from this, but we need government action. We need, we need the government to make changes because that's where, that's where change happens is on the government level. I know <laughs> there are probably some people out there who will roll their eyes at that comment and say, the government, what good did they ever get done? Well, you know, I mean, I could think of a few examples of where government did do good things. You know, I mean, and, and I know most of my crowd are probably at the moment very conservative-minded people, but uh, who, and I know a few you probably, uh, a few friends of mine are absolute libertarians who just hate government. But, you know, the thing is, is we need government to get things done. And um, Health Canada is part of the government, and it's a department that we do need, and we have to work quickly. So the point of this team was to build a coalition of members of parliament. At, very, at the very least, the goal is to get 170 members of parliament to come together to create and then vote on legislation that fast tracks. Um, the very simple ask of this team is to just support any form of legislation. That's the simplest ask that we ask of these uh, of these MPs when they join this team. The goal of this team, um, which um, I, I haven't had an MP that's been resistant to this. Um, of course, we want um, approval process of treatments um, for ALS treatments no longer than three month approval process. And wide open door and priority access to rare terminal illnesses, period. Um, where I get annoyed is I've had people tell me, well, we need to do our proper due diligence. Where that gets annoying is, um, I mean, we had vaccines that got passed in days. So to me, I want to say, don't tell me you can't do this in three months, a treatment in three months. We can get vaccines passed in days, which frankly, some shouldn't have been. I know from personal experience um, I took the Moderna vaccine myself and um, <laughs> I had heart problems. So um, I think, and then I think it was actually a few weeks after the government said no one under 30 should take the Moderna vaccine. And it, to me, <laughs> that's something that should have had due diligence, but proper checks, but we passed it in days because it's a global pandemic. Well, I mean, ALS has been a global pandemic for um, at as long as we know recorded history wise since the night since the 1860s. So uh, not a lot of excuse there <laughs> for not getting things done. But <clears throat> you know I think why these things get done is of course this it's a rare disease. You know in the title in its description it's a rare terminal illness, right? It's very rare I think Canada right now, only 3,000 Canadians are diagnosed with it. Um, but, but here's the thing. I guess the first question is if you've never been touched with someone with ALS personally, maybe you knew a friend who, uh, who, who's a family member who had ALS. You know, I'm, I think a lot of people who know me are in that position. It's easy to sit back and say, well, that'll never happen to me. It's really easy to do that. You know, I think Lord knows my entire family said the same thing when, you know, probably could say the same thing 20 years ago. You know, no, no, it's not going to happen to us. Why? You know, you know, my dad was in amazing health um, and, you know, <laughs> He, you know, he was just great, and then all of a sudden it hit him. So my first message, everyone, is don't think it can't happen to you. Because it can. And it might. It's a good chance. ALS is growing by the day. And it's becoming more and more infectious day by day. So first thing is don't ever think it can't happen to you. It, it happened to my dad in his 50s. It can happen. You know, and, and, you know, Lord knows it could happen to me in 20 years, for all I know. 
It can happen to you. Yes, you watching. It can happen to your dad. It can happen to your mom. It can happen to your, your aunt, your uncle, your, your grandparents, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your niece, your nephew, you name it. It can, and it probably, in the next 20 years, I guarantee at least one person watching this will be affected personally by ALS. I bet my life on it. But why, my question to everyone watching this, why wait? <laughs> you know, it reminds me of a, um, I think it was a poem. Uh, some sort of tales during um, the Nazi Germany tale. You know, it says, you know, first they came after the Jews and I said nothing. Then they went after the the socialists and the gypsies. I said nothing. Then they went after the con. And then they went after the sorry the Catholics, and I did nothing. Then they went after. Uh, I believe next was you know a few other groups, but then the point of the poem is it comes back, and then then it came to me, and there was no one else. To say anything for me. There's a point to that. And I should have memorized that poem better. And apology. It just came out of my mind as I was talking. And thinking this is actually a good point. The point of this is. You may think. It's not going to affect you now. And why I'm doing this now. And I have good reason to just. Throw this away. No care in the world. You know, the person I knew affected, wash my hands of it. It's done for me. I, I could do that. And it would be easy to do that, frankly. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure my dad would have told me, well, if it's easy, it's probably, you know, usually the best things we can do in life are never easy. Which is the truth, and which is why I continue on that this path because I I don't I'm doing this so the people who who can go in the future and say I need a voice and it's already been done in the next twenty years. Maybe when you have ALS, you won't have to wish why didn't someone speak up fifty years ago. Or 20 years ago, or 10, or even five years ago, or even yesterday. Because I'm doing it today. And that's what this team is about. Taking action. Because nothing gets done by sitting and hoping that something's going to happen. We all do that. We all, I think we all just sit and hope. Someone else is going to take this flag and, and mount it on that hill for me. And right now, I don't think there's enough people who want to carry that flag. Which is sad. Especially in a world where we see on, on social media all the time about these people who care. And, you know... We see these social justice warriors standing up for these vulnerable communities. But it's all, I think it's all talk. And as this, this adage goes, talk is cheap. And <clears throat> I get it. I like to talk. I'm doing it right now. But in my talking, I like to show results for it, which is why, again, the description below has the 26 MPs. And that's my that's my action to my talk. I just don't say I'm going to do something. I do what I say. And these 26 MPs, amazing 26 MPs, I'm going to try and promote as many of them as possible in the, in the near future. We've had... I believe three MPs on this channel to talk about their own personal issues, which is how I like to kind of pay them back for helping fight ALS is highlight issues that they care about or they're talking about. 
um, which again, I highly recommend. Check on the list. If your MP is on this list, give them a thanks on social media or give them an email saying thanks. If you don't see your MP on this list, believe me, I have talked to share a few. Let me actually look at the list right now because I think I've actually talked to many MPs. Uh, I've actually talked to... I actually think the number is closer to 40. So um, most MPs just don't get back to me, which fair enough, that happens. Um, only four MPs have rejected to meet me out, right? Um, and uh, no, sorry, th three. Three MPs have re rejected to meet me out, right? And two have refused to just help with this campaign whatsoever. Um, one of which was a minister. Um, and as I said, you know, the current minister of health, try to get in contact. Uh, I actually tried to get them on this show, but they didn't want to come on. Um, don't know why. Um, I, they even said they may even send the secretary of health then. Nothing. I don't know. But that's the point of this team. This it, it, it continues to grow, and the bigger it gets, the easier it is to recruit people. And I am just so thrilled with the, of course, the 26 people that I have on, and just so thrilled, uh, just so thrilled, um, just just with everything that's that has been going on and it's just uh man <laughs> uh it, it really is been been a journey and one that has not been easy uh very emotional <laughs> and just uh oh man just <laughs> but you know we got to continue on uh, fighting on, fighting uh, for ALS, and we continue to grow the team every day. I'm hoping, actually, by the end of this month, that, um, uh, yeah, by the end of March, sorry, probably by the end of March, we'll definitely have 28. I'm hoping to have 30, but you know, we'll we'll see what efforts we have. But we should definitely have 28 by the end of this month. I send these requests out to MPs every single day, and um, it, it doesn't help with just me alone asking random MPs to meet with me. Uh, we also need their constituents to meet with me. Um, so um, it, it's a very important part of this process, and we need to do it together, uh, united as one, and that's why we need to continue on uh, with the race of 338, and we need to get there uh, soon. And so I just thank everyone for their support, who has suggested MPs in the past, who has reached out to their MPs, um, and, and we look forward to actually growing this team exponentially, and hopefully when we hit that 170 mark is going to be the day, hopefully we can actually provide legislation and vote on it and call on these MPs for their commitment to support legislation and ALS. And the first key of that is treatment. We need treatment brought in. That's the point of this team, to bring in treatment, to also make it easier for treatment, to um, regulate drug pricing that's affordable for these companies, not to mention we want quick turnover no longer than three months. That's the that's the end game for the, the current short-term goal. Of course, long-term goal is, is uh, bringing a cure to ALS. But there are so many good treatments out there that can save people, that have good results. That's why we need to start funding. The Government of Canada and Health Canada should be funding um, you know, these, these other projects out there that are creating new experimental, uh, uh, uh treatments that can actually, there's one in the United States, um, I, uh, Dr. Uh, Appel, I believe his name is, who is actually on the verge of halting the progress of ALS, if I'm not mistaken. You have, uh, projects like the Healy trial, uh, which my father was part of, where he had to cross the border, um, we wanted support for that. Thanks, to, big thanks actually to that to Bob Zimmer at the time in 2021, uh, maybe in 2022 actually at the time for sending off a letter to the Minister of Health, 
um, probably just got thrown away knowing P Patty Haidu, um, um, but um, her in her office. But um, anyways, big thanks to Bob Zimmer for doing that. You know, I hope to have Bob Zimmer on the channel actually because um, and and have him talk about some port stuff. He's a, a, a dear friend um, and has been very supportive of of this campaign and uh, it was awesome because it came a point where michelle rumpel's office just totally dismantled our letter and not only refused to sign it and support it and but absolutely just wanted to tear it down and just make it as generic as possible um so big thing i want to big shout out to bob zimmer for that because he was absolutely amazing uh with the healy trial it's something that we wanted brought to canada so my father didn't have to constantly cross the border um and of course many canadians are, don't live on the border and they need access to it it's, it's a great trial um and i hope to talk about it more in the near future um but i'm just just you know we, we just need these kind of treatments that are available and that won't happen if we just sit and be silent it's going to take work um like these 26 mps you know um you know we we you know and to people and members of parliament on the als caucus like uh like uh like todd doherty who is the um the co-vice chair on the als caucus who's doing amazing work um and, and you know big thanks to todd doherty who's also working on that and of course on the mental health battles as well that's super important um so that's the kind of work we need to get doing. These are the treatments we need to bring in. There's a whole long list of treatments. And the thing about ALS is it's not a one, not one size fits all disease. They, one treatment won't work for another person just because it works for this person. That's why, that's actually why Healy, the Healy trial is the greatest because it's right now in the trial phase where it finds out what a person needs and you can get them what they need. So they try different, different times to see what works for you. That's why we should bring it to Canada. They want to come to Canada. Let, let me be clear. It's not just something we need to bring. It's something that wants to be here. Their ask isn't even that big. They're asking just for a spot to be in. And I think a million dollars, the rate that this government has spent on ridiculous crap a million dollars is nothing. Okay, it, it, it's it's nothing. It, it's it's not even. It doesn't even come close to what any I think other big ask any big company ask is so far anything like that. A um, million dollars is nothing. They they want a million dollars and and I think research uh, they want spots in I think five university campuses across Canada that would benefit thousands of Canadians and um, their ask was not complicated but they have to go through the vigorous trial process of Health Canada, which is so harsh that not only are companies refusing to come to Canada, they're even leaving in the middle of trial process in Canada. This is our Health Canada, where, where companies don't want to come here because Health Canada is too aggressive and it's just too expensive. We, we push these companies away for no reason. For no reason. And I could go on with a number of different issues that our healthcare system has. And believe me, we have a lot. Just, as I said, I, I probably could go off for 48 hours of all the issues that our country has on healthcare. Believe me or not, our healthcare system is absolute crap. It, it is not a good system at all. Um, if you think it's good, it's probably because you never had to rely on it. Um because uh, you've never needed to rely on the healthcare system heavily. Um, now, there's always an exception to the rule. Maybe someone has has had great healthcare service, but from the story horror stories I've heard from hospitals and even my own dad's experience being in Surrey Memorial, like I think it's the biggest hospital in Surrey, and it was absolutely filthy, um, terrible, you know, service for a hospital. I think, um, so my dad is in late stages of ALS, and I want to tell the story because this deserves to be shamed upon. Sorry, Memorial, shame on you for doing this. Um, and I wish I had that nurse's name because I would absolutely, absolutely be. I want to, I would, I would love to call the hospital and report this person. But uh, before you go to Surrey Memorial, think about this story. Um, my, my father would be rushed to the hospital, um, for, uh, I believe it was heavy constipation and it was becoming very serious. Uh, essentially at that point, 
Um, he had to be alone in the ER because uh, my mom was flying down because she was visiting um, a family up north. Of course, I was up north as well. Um, also, may I say this, it took five hours for the ambulance to get to the house. Uh, and my grandparents who were with him at the time called 911 twice and ambulance dispatcher uh, three times. It wasn't until I called twice that the ambulance, he was actually put on the list. Ambulance wasn't coming. He wasn't even on the list for five hours. You think someone in his condition would take priority? Um, like, I even asked if they could, I, you know, the most interesting thing, I even asked if they could send like an RCMP officer, EMT, over just to keep an eye on him while the ambulance is coming. They refuse to do it. Um, congratulations, Surrey Dispatch. Way to totally just. And I know ambulances in right now, and again, this relates back to my point of how crap our healthcare system is in this story. But the, you know, the worst part of what happened, I found not only was the hospital filthy, dirty, you know, and may I remind people, hospitals are supposed to be sterile. This is after COVID where we expect our hospitals to be, I could lick off the damn floor, but uh, the pictures I saw and I wish I could, sh I wish I had them to share them to you now, but the pictures I saw of a filthy hospital, just absolutely dirty. And this isn't Surrey. This isn't some like, <laughs> you know, rural community where they don't have enough, people to clean the place this is surrey surrey memorial hospital but when my dad was in the er he needed something and my dad he was in a, a stages of als where he can't do things on his own pressing the button for help the nurse barged in and essentially yelled at him to stop pushing the button the help button the button you push for help stop pushing it in in a, in an ER room, uh, that's our healthcare, folks. That's our healthcare. Dirty hospitals, especially after a pandemic, which is to me, how is that possible? Filthy hospital, uh, terrible bedside manner, and just no no care for someone who needs physical help who can't do any couldn't do much on his own but he could barely breathe on his own may, may, may i mention so that's canadian healthcare for you um welcome yeah woo at least we don't have to pay for it maybe if we paid for it they do better but whatever that's uh that's what we have to live with and hopefully we can make it better but we only make it better by talking to people like these MPs, like your local MLAs or MPP if you're in Ontario, that's how you bring change. You need to talk and you need to let, you know, my biggest thing is the people who don't say anything but complain in secret. And my philosophy is if you don't say anything or don't vote away or don't choose not to vote or speak out or anything like that, you frankly shouldn't have a right to complain about it because you've done nothing to fix it. It's easy to sit, mumble, and groan in your basement or in your, you know, in your car about nothing getting done. But my question to these people is usually, what have you done? And if the world's ignoring you, fine, sit, grumble, and complain. I do that constantly. That's why I created a platform to do it openly. And you all get to join in this journey in my grumbling uh, with me. Uh, but it's something we need to change. It's easy to sit and complain. It's another thing to take action, which is what we need to do. It's more than just sitting and grumbling. It's why we need to bring attention to these kind of issues. And believe me, my dad's situation is not the only time I've heard of a healthcare situation. I've actually heard people dying in poor conditions in BC hospitals. Um, and I've witnessed um, the, vi the visuals of the conditions of some of these hospitals. It's not good. It's This is not my imagination, just my one experience. It's a constant experience I hear in this province and something that does need to change. So let's do that together by keeping the issue issues on unmute. Before I close today, I want to make uh, an announcement. Uh, we are 
planning something very special for this year's um, ALS Awareness Month. Um, so as you know, ALS Awareness Month, uh, take or as you probably you might not know, because no one cares about these stuff, um, but uh, ALS Awareness Month is in June. Um, so if you're, uh, at least, I know at least in British Columbia, um, <clears throat> they do walks across, uh, across the province. So please go out. Um, follow uh, AALS, the BC ALS Society. They do a lot of good and a lot of good things. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, if you have a chance to donate to them, please do. Um, I, I can't say we're doing special and trying to work with the BC ALS Society to plan something big for ALS Awareness Month. Um, and I am so excited for that project. We, I hope to have more information and be able to share a project, the, the official project, hopefully by end of April, May at the latest, I'm hoping, um, but we definitely want to get it planned and it's definitely on the way. So keep an ear out for that and uh, for live videos like this for any further updates on that. Uh, secondly, for this channel specifically, um, I know I've posted a lot of this show, the Unmuted, uh, my Unmuted show podcast, um, but there has been asks to restart my more uh, partisan political uh, uh, commentary, which uh, we will be starting up for sure, um, which will be uh, being uh, live streamed as well on this channel um, with a new show, which we will be revealing uh, the name and the show in probably the next few weeks. Um, so keep an eye out for that if you're looking for more than just my complaining about Canadian healthcare and uh, ALS. So it's uh, something that I think will take off. Um, but just don't be assured that will not end the unmuted uh, podcast. It will keep it going. We will keep this going as uh, as consistently as it can. I'm hoping to keep this more consistent and keep out. We are looking for some more guests on our live stream. We're hoping to have uh, people such as, um, as I said, Bob Zimmer. Of course, we were hoping to have people return. I know Todd Doherty just had a bill to the floor that I would love to have him on talking about and that we should talk about a bit more in the future, um, as well as uh, members of parliament, um, such as uh, Garnet Janis on, on the um, international developments right now happening um, and as well as uh, people like Michael like like Cooper, who have been very vocal on uh, issues like the maid issue. Um, and so hopefully we can uh, have some of these guys come in and talk about other issues that need to be put, um, be taken off mute. So for all to hear. Thanks, everyone. And make sure in make sure to check the description below. There are the 26 MPs uh, down there who are currently on the team. Make sure, find your MP. If your MP is on there, give them a thanks. If you want to know how to find your MP, um, just go on, just go to Google and just put in find my MP. It will be the first link to the House of Commons. Put in your postal code and it'll find your member of parliament. <clears throat> From there, uh, you're able to find their contact information and able way to find them if your MP is not on that list. If they're not on the list, uh, find them on social media, tag them on this video, or uh, share the video and tag your MP, or uh, just uh, reach out to them and say, you know, um, pull, you know, mention my name and what I've been doing, and uh, feel free to share this video. It will be on YouTube and Facebook. They're on both. So share this video with your MP, share any of my previous videos with the MPs, um, you know, with your MP if you want them on board. This is what they're signing on for to end ALS and we want to grow the team. We want it to go. Hopefully we'll hit 338 MPs. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. Um, right now, as I said, we're at 26. Uh, definitely before the end of the month, we will have 28. I'm hoping to have 30. We're hoping to bump that up to 30, around 30 number of MPs before the end of the month. Uh, but we will keep on fighting every day until we have a cure for ALS and we rid of it, uh, ending and ending ALS, uh, not of course just in Canada, but around the world. And uh, we only do that by working together, by fighting together, standing together, making sure uh, that no man gets left behind. And of course, no, <clears throat> and no one is forgotten who has fallen from the fight of ALS. And we continue together uh, to 
fight so no one else has to fall to this terrible disease um, now or the future. And, uh, you know, let us just, uh, yeah, as I said, just let's stand together and ALS and continue to, to uh, turn off the mute button for the issue like ALS. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.